Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a dependent samples t-test in R. Now, when we want to compare two samples uh, to determine if there's a significant difference or not between the means of the two samples, we can conduct a t-test as long as the data are normally distributed. There are two types of uh, t-test. There is a dependent samples or paired t-test and there's also an independent samples or unpaired t-test. So in this video, we're going to look at the dependent samples or paired version. Our null and alternative hypothesis in a comment here in lines four and five, our null is that the population means are equal and the alternative is that our population means are not equal. We're going to test this hypothesis using samples uh, at an alpha value of 0 0.05. So before we start, let's read in some data and I've made this data up for the purposes of this video. Uh, these are data based on pre and post test results. So the data file that I'm going to read in is data file number 88, uh, this CSV file, along with all other CSV files uh, for this series of videos plus R scripts are available in my GitHub and you'll find a link to that in the information section beneath this video on the YouTube page. So I'm going to read this file in and store it in a vector called test results and then display the contents of that vector. So we've got 30 records and these records are the results of a pre-test and a post-test. So what I have done here is I have given 30 students a test before a class and then after the class is finished I've given them a follow-up test, a post-test and I want to determine is there a difference between the pre and post tests. In other words has the class, has my teaching made a difference to the test results. So a t-test, a dependent samples paired t-test is the most appropriate test to use in this case here. Now I should first of all I check for normality. I could assume that the data are normally distributed because my sample size is 30. But let me do a quick check here. I'm going to use the Shapiro Wilk test. So that's the Shapiro.test function. And put in my test results for, first of all, for the pre-test. So let me run that line and see if the pre-test data are normally distributed. And the p-value is 0 0.19, and that is greater than my alpha value uh, that I've set out uh, previously. Uh, so therefore, this indicates that my test is n my results are normally distributed. Let me do this again for the second set of test results. TST results, and dollar sign, and pick up the post-test this time. Run this line. And we can see that my p-value is uh, 0.1165 and that's also greater than my alpha value of 0 0.05. Therefore, the post-test results are also normally distributed. So now I'm ready to conduct my t-test. I've got uh, paired data and I've got two sets of normally distributed data. A dependent samples t-test is the most appropriate in this case here. And to do this, I'm going to use the t.test function. Now this um, function uh, is um, built into R and if you go to the help section in R Studio to click on the help tab type in t.test you get some information about the, te the test which is students t-test of course you get a description and how it's used and some parameters and arguments and examples used in there. So there's a couple of things I need to tell the t-test function. The first is well what are the two variables I want to compare so I'm going to type these in again test results um, dollar sign I'm going to put in the pre-test first comma and then put in the, I'm going to compare that to the test results, dollar sign again, and the post test. So these are my two variables that I'm going to compare. Now I could leave it at that, but there's a couple of other parameters that I need to put in uh, to complete this test. So put in a comma and move down to the next line. You'll see that in the null and alternative hypo hypothesis, I have not specified a direction. In other words, I have not said that one population mean is greater than or less than the other. I have just, I'm just looking for a difference. So that means then that this is a two-sided test. And I, insert, in, um, I indicate that using the alternative parameter is equal to an inverted commas. Be very careful here with your spelling. Two dot sided. And then finally, of course, the most important thing in this particular test is that I have to indicate whether the data are paired or unpaired. So the default is that the data are unpaired. So I must, in this case in here, put in the, use the using the paired parameter, uh, indicate that the data, that this is true for in this case here. We can see that the uh, true logical operator changes to a blue color in my case. So to recap here, I'm using the t.test function. I'm telling uh, um, R, well, which of two variables am I going to use? So I'm comparing the pre-test to the post-test. I'm indicating that it's a two-sided test. And finally, I'm indicating that the data are paired in this case. So I'm now ready to run this. So let's run. 
I'm going to scroll upwards here to show the results. And I get the results of a paired t-test. Now there's plenty of information here, but the key information that we're looking for, first of all, for our reporting purposes, is that the t-statistic is minus 4.6, and that's quite a big t-statistic. Uh, it's minus because um, it's indicating that the pre-test results are lower than the post-test results. The pre-test results is the first variable, post being the second variable. We have 29 degrees of freedom, which will be important for when you go to write this up. And we've got a p-value here. It's a very, very small p-value. It's calculated as 7.492 by 10 to the power of minus 5. So that, of course, is a very, very small number. And we report that as a p-value less than 0.001. So let me write that out as a comment up here. I report the t-statistic for 29 degrees of freedom is equal to minus 4.66, uh, round that to three decimal places, 670, comma, and then our p-value, when it's a tiny value like this, we report it as 0 0.001. So the p is less than 0 0.001. We don't put in the calculation value for that. So this is how we report our results. In this case here, we have found a significant difference between the pre and post test results. The negative value indicates that the pre test results are lower than the post test results. And our difference is significant, very significant here at a value of uh, less than 0 0.001. So in this case then, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to reject the null hypothesis that the means are equal in favor of the alternative that they are not equal. So we have found a significant difference between the pre and post test results uh, using the t.test function. So that's how you conduct a dependent samples or paired t-test in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.